Manchester United FC Wikipedia article audio Manchester United Football Club is a professional football club based in Old Trafford, Greater Manchester, England, that competes in the Premier League, the top flight of English football. Nicknamed the Red Devils, the club was founded as Newton Heath LYR Football Club in 1878, changed its name to Manchester United in 1902 and moved to its current stadium, Old Trafford, in 1910. History Early Years Busby Years 1969-1986 Ferguson years 2013 present Crest and colors Kit evolution Grounds Support Rivalries Global brand Sponsorship Ownership and finances Players First team squad out on loan Reserves and Academy Former Players Club Captains Player Records Sir Matt Busby Player of the Year Club Officials Managerial History Honours Domestic Manchester United have won a record 20 league titles, 12 FA Cups, 5 League Cups and a record 21 FA Community Shields. The club has also won three UEFA Champions Leagues, one UEFA Europa League, one UEFA Cup Winners' Cup, one UEFA Super Cup, one Intercontinental Cup and one FIFA Club World Cup. In 1998-99, the club became the first in the history of English football to achieve the treble of the Premier League, the FA Cup and the UEFA Champions League. In 2016-17, by winning the UEFA Europa League, they became one of five clubs to have won all three main UEFA club competitions. In addition, they became the only professional English club to have won every ongoing honour available to the first team that is organised by a national or international governing body. League Cups The 1958 Munich Air disaster claimed the lives of eight players. In 1968, under the management of Matt Busby, Manchester United became the first English football club to win the European Cup. Alex Ferguson won 38 trophies as manager, including 13 Premier League titles, five FA Cups and two UEFA Champions Leagues, between 1986 and 2013, when he announced his retirement. Jose Mourinho is the club's current manager having been appointed on May 27, 2016. European Worldwide Manchester United was the highest-earning football club in the world for 2016-17, with an annual revenue of €576.3 million, Euros, and the world's most valuable football club in 2017 valued at £2.86 billion. As of June 2015, it is the world's most valuable football brand, estimated to be worth $1.2 billion. After being floated on the London Stock Exchange in 1991, the club was purchased by Malcolm Glazer in May 2005 in a deal valuing the club at almost £800 million after which the company was taken private again, before going public once more in August 2012, when they made an initial public offering on the New York Stock Exchange. Manchester United is one of the most widely supported football clubs in the world, 
and has its strongest rivalries with Liverpool, Manchester City and Leeds United. Manchester United was formed in 1878 as Newton Heath LYR Football Club by the carriage and wagon department of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Depot at Newton Heath. The team initially played games against other departments and railway companies, but on November 20, 1880, they competed in their first recorded match, wearing the colours of the railway company green and gold they were defeated 6-0 by Bolton Wanderers reserve team. By 1888, the club had become a founding member of the Combination, a regional football league. Following the league's dissolution after only one season, Newton Heath joined the newly formed Football Alliance, which ran for three seasons before being merged with the Football League. This resulted in the club starting the 1892-93 season in the first division, by which time it had become independent of the railway company and dropped the LYR from its name. After two seasons, the club was relegated to the second division. In January 1902, with debts of £2,670 equivalent to £270,000 in 2018 the club was served with a winding-up order. Captain Harry Stafford found four local businessmen, including John Henry Davies, each willing to invest £500 in return for a direct interest in running the club and who subsequently changed the name, on April 24, 1902, Manchester United was officially born. Under Ernest Mangnall, who assumed managerial duties in 1903, the team finished as second division runners-up in 1906 and secured promotion to the first division, which they won in 1908 the club's first league title. The following season began with victory in the first ever Charity Shield and ended with the club's first FA Cup title. Manchester United won the first division for the second time in 1911, but at the end of the following season, Mangnall left the club to join Manchester City. In 1922, Three years after the resumption of football following the First World War, the club was relegated to the second division, where it remained until regaining promotion in 1925. Relegated again in 1931, Manchester United became a yo-yo club, achieving its all-time lowest position of 20th place in the second division in 1934. Following the death of principal benefactor John Henry Davies in October 1927, the club's finances deteriorated to the extent that Manchester United would likely have gone bankrupt had it not been for James W. Gibson, who, in December 1931, invested £2,000 and assumed control of the club. In the 1938-39 season, the last year of football before the Second World War, the club finished 14th in the first division. In October 1945, the impending resumption of football led to the managerial appointment of Matt Busby, who demanded an unprecedented level of control over team selection, player transfers, and training sessions. Busby led the team to second-place league finishes in 1947, 1948 and 1949, and to FA Cup victory in 1948. In 1952, the club won the first division, its first league title for 41 years. With an average age of 22, the back-to-back -back title winning side of 1956 were labelled the Busby Babes by the media, a testament to Busby's faith in his youth players. In 1957, Manchester United became the first English team to compete in the European Cup, despite objections from the Football League, who had denied Chelsea the same opportunity the previous season. En route to the semi-final, 
which they lost to Real Madrid, the team recorded a 10-0 victory over Belgian champions Anderlecht, which remains the club's biggest victory on record. The following season, on the way home from a European Cup quarter-final victory against Red Star Belgrade, the aircraft carrying the Manchester United players, officials and journalists crashed while attempting to take off after refueling in Munich, Germany. The Munich air disaster of February 6, 1958 claimed 23 lives, including those of eight players Jeff Bent, Roger Byrne, Eddie Coleman, Duncan Edwards, Mark Jones, David Pegg, Tommy Taylor and Billy Wellen and injured several more. Reserve team manager Jimmy Murphy took over as manager while Busby recovered from his injuries and the club's makeshift side reached the FA Cup final, which they lost to Bolton Wanderers. In recognition of the team's tragedy, UEFA invited the club to compete in the 1958-59 European Cup alongside eventual league champions Wolverhampton Wanderers. Despite approval from the FA, the Football League determined that the club should not enter the competition, since it had not qualified. Busby rebuilt the team through the 1960s by signing players such as Dennis Law and Pat Creerand, who combined with the next generation of youth players including George Best to win the FA Cup in 1963. The following season, they finished second in the league then won the title in 1965 and 1967. In 1968, Manchester United became the first English club to win the European Cup, beating Benfica 4-1 in the final with a team that contained three European footballers of the year, Bobby Charlton, Dennis Law and George Best. Matt Busby resigned as manager in 1969 and was replaced by the reserve team coach, former Manchester United player Wilf McGuinness. Following an eighth-place finish in the 1969-70 season and a poor start to the 1970-71 season, Busby was persuaded to temporarily resume managerial duties, and McGuinness returned to his position as reserve team coach. In June 1971, Frank O'Farrell was appointed as manager, but lasted less than 18 months before being replaced by Tommy Daugherty in December 1972. Daugherty saved Manchester United from relegation that season, only to see them relegated in 1974, by that time the trio of Best, Law, and Charlton had left the club. The team won promotion at the first attempt and reached the FA Cup final in 1976, but were beaten by Southampton. They reached the final again in 1977, beating Liverpool 2-1. Daugherty was dismissed shortly afterwards, following the revelation of his affair with the club physiotherapist's wife. Dave Sexton replaced Daugherty as manager in the summer of 1977. Despite major signings, including Joe Jordan, Gordon McQueen, Gary Bailey and Ray Wilkins, the team failed to achieve any significant results, they finished in the top two in 1979-80 and lost to Arsenal in the 1979 FA Cup final. Sexton was dismissed in 1981 even though the team won the last seven games under his direction. He was replaced by Ron Atkinson, who immediately broke the British record transfer fee to sign Brian Robson from West Bromwich Albion. Under Atkinson, Manchester United won the FA Cup twice in three years in 1983 and 1985. In 1985-86, after 13 wins and two draws in its first 15 matches, the club was favourite to win the league, but finished in fourth place. The following season, with the club in danger of relegation by November, Atkinson was dismissed. 
Alex Ferguson and his assistant Archie Knox arrived from Aberdeen on the day of Atkinson's dismissal, and guided the club to an 11th place finish in the league. Despite a second place finish in 1987 88, the club was back in 11th place the following season. Reportedly on the verge of being dismissed, victory over Crystal Palace in the 1990 FA Cup final replay saved Ferguson's career. The following season, Manchester United claimed its first Cup Winners' Cup title and competed in the 1991 UEFA Super Cup, beating European Cup holders Red Star Belgrade 1-0 in the final at Old Trafford. A second consecutive League Cup final appearance followed in 1992, in which the team beat Nottingham Forest 1-0 at Wembley. In 1993, the club won its first league title since 1967, and a year later, for the first time since 1957, it won a second consecutive title alongside the FA Cup to complete the first double in the club's history. In the 1998-99 season, Manchester United became the first team to win the Premier League, FA Cup and UEFA Champions League the treble in the same season. Losing 1-0 going into injury time in the 1999 UEFA Champions League final, Teddy Sheringham and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer scored late goals to claim a dramatic victory over Bayern Munich in what is considered one of the greatest comebacks of all time. The club also won the Intercontinental Cup after beating Palmeiras 1-0 in Tokyo. Ferguson was subsequently knighted for his services to football. Manchester United won the league again in the 1999-2000 and 2001 seasons. The team finished third in 2001-02 before regaining the title in 2002-03. They won the 2003-04 FA Cup, beating Millwall 3-0 in the final at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff to lift the trophy for a record 11th time. In the 2005-06 season, Manchester United failed to qualify for the knockout phase of the UEFA Champions League for the first time in over a decade but recovered to secure a second-place league finish and victory over Wigan Athletic in the 2006 Football League Cup final. The club regained the Premier League in the 2006-07 and 2007-08 seasons, and completed the European double by beating Chelsea 6-5 on penalties in the 2008 UEFA Champions League final in Moscow's Luzhniki Stadium. Ryan Giggs made a record 759th appearance for the club in this game, overtaking previous record holder Bobby Charlton. In December 2008, the club won the 2008 FIFA Club World Cup and followed this with the 2008-09 Football League Cup, and its third successive Premier League title. That summer, Cristiano Ronaldo was sold to Real Madrid for a world record £80 million. In 2010, Manchester United defeated Aston Villa 2-1 at Wembley to retain the League Cup, its first successful defence of a knockout cup competition. After finishing as runner-up to Chelsea in the 2009-10 season, United achieved a record 19th league title in 2010-11, securing the championship with a 1-1 away draw against Blackburn Rovers on May 14, 2011. This was extended to 20 league titles in 2012-13, securing the championship with a 3-0 home win against Aston Villa on April 22, 2013. On May 8, 2013, Ferguson announced that he was to retire as manager at the end of the football season, but would remain at the club as a director and club ambassador. The club announced the next day that Everton manager David Moyes would replace him from July 1, 
having signed a six-year contract. Ryan Giggs took over as interim player manager ten months later, on April 22, 2014, when Moyes was sacked after a poor season in which the club failed to defend their Premier League title and failed to qualify for the UEFA Champions League for the first time since 1995-96. They also failed to qualify for the Europa League, meaning that it was the first time Manchester United hadn't qualified for a European competition since 1990. On May 19, 2014, it was confirmed that Louis van Gaal would replace Moyes as Manchester United manager on a three-year deal, with Giggs as his assistant. Malcolm Glazer the patriarch of the Glazer family that owns the club, died on May 28, 2014. Although Van Gaal's first season saw United once again qualify for the Champions League through a fourth-place finish in the Premier League, his second season saw United go out of the same tournament in the group stage. United also fell behind in the title race for the third consecutive season, finishing in fifth place, in spite of several expensive signings during Van Gaal's tenure. However, that same season, Manchester United won the FA Cup for a twelfth time. Despite this victory, Van Gaal was sacked as manager just two days later, with José Mourinho appointed in his place on May 27, signing a three-year contract. That season, United finished in sixth place while winning the EFL Cup for the fifth time and the Europa League for the first time, as well as the FA Community Shield for a record 21st time. Wayne Rooney scored his 250th goal with United, surpassing Sir Bobby Charlton as United's all-time top scorer, before leaving the club at the end of the season to return to Everton. The club crest is derived from the Manchester City Council coat of arms, although all that remains of it on the current crest is the ship in full sail. The devil stems from the club's nickname the Red Devils, it was included on club programs and scarves in the 1960s, and incorporated into the club crest in 1970, although the crest was not included on the chest of the shirt until 1971. Newton Heath's uniform in 1879, four years before the club played its first competitive match, has been documented as white with blue cord. A photograph of the Newton Heath team, taken in 1892, is believed to show the players wearing red and white quartered jerseys and navy blue knickerbockers. Between 1894-96, the players wore distinctive green and gold jerseys which were replaced in 1896 by white shirts, which were worn with navy blue shorts. After the name change in 1902, the club colors were changed to red shirts, white shorts and black socks, which has become the standard Manchester United home kit. Very few changes were made to the kit until 1922 when the club adopted white shirts bearing a deep red V around the neck, similar to the shirt worn in the 1909 FA Cup final. They remained part of their home kits until 1927. For a period in 1934, the cherry and white hooped change shirt became the home colours, but the following season the red shirt was recalled after the club's lowest ever league placing of 20th in the second division and the hooped shirt dropped back to being the change. The black socks were changed to white from 1959 to 1965, where they were replaced with red socks up until 1971, when the club reverted to black. Black shorts and slash or white socks are sometimes worn with the home strip, most often in away games, if there is a clash with the opponent's kit. Since 1997-98, white socks have been the preferred choice for European games, 
which are typically played on weeknights, to aid with player visibility. The current home kit is a red Henley shirt, with black and white banded cuffs and the trademark Adidas three stripes in white across the shoulders. The Manchester United away strip has often been a white shirt, black shorts and white socks, but there have been several exceptions. These include an all-black strip with blue and gold trimmings between 1993 and 1995, the navy blue shirt with silver horizontal pinstripes worn during the 1999-2000 season, and the 2011-12 away kit which had a royal blue body and sleeves with hoops made of small midnight navy blue and black stripes, with black shorts and blue socks. An all-grey away kit worn during the 1995-96 season was dropped after just five games, most notoriously against Southampton where Alex Ferguson forced the team to change into the third kit during halftime of its final outing. The reason for dropping it being that the players claimed to have trouble finding their teammates against the crowd, United failed to win a competitive game in the kit. In 2001, to celebrate 100 years as Manchester United, a reversible white-slash-gold away kit was released, although the actual match day shirts were not reversible. The club's third kit is often all blue. This was most recently the case during the 2014-15 season. Exceptions include a green and gold half shirt worn between 1992 and 1994, a blue and white striped shirt worn during the 1994-95 and 1995-96 seasons and once in 1996-97 an all-black kit worn during the treble-winning 1998-99 season, and a white shirt with black and red horizontal pinstripes worn between 2003-04 and 2005-06. From 2006-07 to 2013-14, the third kit was the previous season's away kit albeit updated with the new club sponsor in 2006-07 and 2010-11, apart from 2008-09 when an all-blue kit was launched to mark the 40th anniversary of the 1967-68 European Cup success. Newton Heath initially played on a field on North Road, close to the railway yard, the original capacity was about 12,000 but club officials deemed the facilities inadequate for a club hoping to join the football league. Some expansion took place in 1887, and in 1891, Newton Heath used its minimal financial reserves to purchase two grandstands, each able to hold 1,000 spectators. Although attendances were not recorded for many of the earliest matches at North Road, the highest documented attendance was approximately 15,000 for a first division match against Sunderland on March 4, 1893. A similar attendance was also recorded for a friendly match against Gordon Villa on September 5, 1889. In June 1893, after the club was evicted from North Road by its owners, Manchester Deans and Cannons, who felt it was inappropriate for the club to charge an entry fee to the ground, Secretary A. H. Albutt procured the use of the Bank Street ground in Clayton. It initially had no stands, by the start of the 1893-94 season, two had been built, one spanning the full length of the pitch on one side and the other behind the goal at the Bradford end. At the opposite end, the Clayton end, the ground had been built up, thousands thus being provided for. Newton Heath's first league match at Bank Street was played against Burnley on September 1, 1893, when 10,000 people saw Alf Farman score a hat-trick, Newton Heath's only goals in a 3-2 win. The remaining stands were completed for the following league game against Nottingham Forest three weeks later. 
In October 1895, before the visit of Manchester City, the club purchased a 2,000 capacity stand from the Broughton Rangers Rugby League Club, and put up another stand on the reserved side. However, weather restricted the attendance for the Manchester City match to just 12,000. When the Bank Street ground was temporarily closed by bailiffs in 1902, club captain Harry Stafford raised enough money to pay for the club's next away game at Bristol City and found a temporary ground at Harper Hay for the next reserves game against Pottyham. Following financial investment, new club president John Henry Davies paid £500 for the erection of a new 1,000 seat stand at Bank Street. Within four years, the stadium had cover on all four sides, as well as the ability to hold approximately 50,000 spectators, some of whom could watch from the viewing gallery atop the main stand. However, following Manchester United's first league title in 1908 and the FA Cup a year later, it was decided that Bank Street was too restrictive for Davies' ambition, in February 1909. Six weeks before the club's first FA Cup title, Old Trafford was named as the home of Manchester United, following the purchase of land for around £60,000. Architect Archibald Leach was given a budget of £30,000 for construction, original plans called for seating capacity of 100000 though budget constraints forced a revision to 77000 the building was constructed by Messrs. Bramald and Smith of Manchester. The stadium's record attendance was registered on March 25, 1939, when an FA Cup semi-final between Wolverhampton Wanderers and Grimsby Town drew 76,962 spectators. Bombing in the Second World War destroyed much of the stadium the central tunnel in the south stand was all that remained of that quarter. After the war, the club received compensation from the War Damage Commission in the amount of £22,278. While reconstruction took place, the team played its home games at Manchester City's main road ground, Manchester United was charged £5,000 per year plus a nominal percentage of gate receipts. Later improvements included the addition of roofs, first to the Stretford end and then to the north and east stands. The roofs were supported by pillars that obstructed many fans' views, and they were eventually replaced with a cantilevered structure. The Stretford end was the last stand to receive a cantilevered roof, completed in time for the 1993-94 season. First used on March 25, 1957 and costing £40,000, four 180-foot pylons were erected, each housing 54 individual floodlights. These were dismantled in 1987 and replaced by a lighting system embedded in the roof of each stand, which remains in use today. The Taylor Report S requirement for an all-seater stadium lowered capacity at Old Trafford to around 44,000 by 1993. In 1995, the North Stand was redeveloped into three tiers, restoring capacity to approximately 55,000. At the end of the 1998-99 season, second tiers were added to the East and West Stands raising capacity to around 67,000, and between July 2005 and May 2006, 8,000 more seats were added via second tiers in the northwest and northeast quadrants. Part of the new seating was used for the first time on March 26, 2006, when an attendance of 69,070 became a new Premier League record. 
The record was pushed steadily upwards before reaching its peak on March 31, 2007, when 76,098 spectators saw Manchester United beat Blackburn Rovers 4-1, with just 114 seats unoccupied. In 2009, Reorganization of the seating resulted in a reduction of capacity by 255 to 75,957. Manchester United has the second highest average attendance of European football clubs only behind Borussia Dortmund. Manchester United is one of the most popular football clubs in the world, with one of the highest average home attendance in Europe. The club states that its worldwide fan base includes more than 200 officially recognised branches of the Manchester United Supporters Club, in at least 24 countries. The club takes advantage of this support through its worldwide summer tours. Accountancy firm and sports industry consultants Deloitte estimate that Manchester United has 75 million fans worldwide while other estimates put this figure closer to 333 million. The club has the third highest social media following in the world among sports teams, with over 71 million Facebook fans as of September 2016. A 2014 study showed that Manchester United had the loudest fans in the Premier League. Doubles and Trebles Footnotes Supporters are represented by two independent bodies, the Independent Manchester United Supporters Association, which maintains close links to the club through the MUFC Fans Forum, and the Manchester United Supporters Trust. After the Glazer family's takeover in 2005, a group of fans formed a splinter club, FC. United of Manchester. The West Stand of Old Trafford The Stratford End is the home end and the traditional source of the club's most vocal support. Manchester United has rivalries with Arsenal, Leeds United, Liverpool, and Manchester City, against whom they contest the Manchester Derby. The rivalry with Liverpool is rooted in competition between the cities during the Industrial Revolution when Manchester was famous for its textile industry while Liverpool was a major port. Manchester United and Liverpool are also the two most successful teams in England and, at many points in their history, they have battled each other for the league title. Their matches are usually considered by the players and their fans as the biggest in any given season. The Roses rivalry with Leeds stems from the Wars of the Roses, fought between the House of Lancaster and the House of York, with Manchester United representing Lancashire and Leeds representing Yorkshire. The rivalry with Arsenal arises from the numerous times the two teams, as well as managers Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger, have battled for the Premier League title. With 33 titles between them this fixture has become known as one of the finest Premier League match UPS in history. Manchester United has been described as a global brand, a 2011 report by Brand Finance valued the club's trademarks and associated intellectual property at £412 million an increase of £39 million on the previous year, valuing it at £11 million more than the second-best brand, Real Madrid, and gave the brand a strength rating of AAA. In July 2012, Manchester United was ranked first by Forbes magazine in its list of the 10 most valuable sports team brands, valuing the Manchester United brand at $2.23 billion. The club is ranked third in the Deloitte Football Money League. In January 2013, the club became the first sports team in the world to be valued at $3 billion. 
Forbes magazine valued the club at $3.3 billion $1.2 billion higher than the next most valuable sports team. They were overtaken by Real Madrid for the next four years, but Manchester United returned to the top of the Forbes list in June 2017, with a valuation of $3.689 billion. The core strength of Manchester United's global brand is often attributed to Matt Busby's rebuilding of the team and subsequent success following the Munich Air disaster, which drew worldwide acclaim. The iconic team included Bobby Charlton and Nobby Stiles, Dennis Law, and George Best. The attacking style of play adopted by this team captured the imagination of the English footballing public. Busby's team also became associated with the liberalization of Western society during the 1960s, George Best, known as the fifth Beatle for his iconic haircut, was the first footballer to significantly develop an off-the-field media profile. As the second English football club to float on the London Stock Exchange in 1991, the club raised significant capital with which it further developed its commercial strategy. The club's focus on commercial and sporting success brought significant profits in an industry often characterized by chronic losses. The strength of the Manchester United brand was bolstered by intense off-the-field media attention to individual players, most notably David Beckham. This attention often generates greater interest in on-the-field activities, and hence generates sponsorship opportunities the value of which is driven by television exposure. During his time with the club, Beckham's popularity across Asia was integral to the club's commercial success in that part of the world. Because higher league placement results in a greater share of television rights, success on the field generates greater income for the club. Since the inception of the Premier League, Manchester United has received the largest share of the revenue generated from the BSKYB broadcasting deal. Manchester United has also consistently enjoyed the highest commercial income of any English club. In 2005-06, the club's commercial arm generated £51 million compared to £42.5 million at Chelsea, £39.3 million at Liverpool, £34 million at Arsenal, and £27.9 million at Newcastle United. A key sponsorship relationship was with sportswear company Nike, who managed the club's merchandising operation as part of a £303 million 13-year partnership between 2002 and 2015. Through Manchester United Finance and the club's membership scheme, One United, those with an affinity for the club can purchase a range of branded goods and services. Additionally, Manchester United branded media services such as the club's dedicated television channel, MUTV have allowed the club to expand its fan base to those beyond the reach of its old Trafford Stadium. In an initial five-year deal worth £500,000, Sharp Electronics became the club's first shirt sponsor at the beginning of the 1982-83 season a relationship that lasted until the end of the 1999-2000 season, when Vodafone agreed a four-year, £30 million deal. Vodafone agreed to pay £36 million to extend the deal by four years, but after two seasons triggered a break clause in order to concentrate on its sponsorship of the Champions League. To commence at the start of the 2006-07 season, American Insurance Corporation AIG agreed a four-year £56.5 million deal which in September 2006 became the most valuable in the world. At the beginning of the 2010-11 season, American Reinsurance Company Aon became the club's principal sponsor in a four-year deal reputed to be worth approximately £80 million, 
making it the most lucrative shirt sponsorship deal in football history. Manchester United announced their first training kit sponsor in August 2011, agreeing a four-year deal with DHL reported to be worth £40 million. It is believed to be the first instance of training kit sponsorship in English football. The DHL contract lasted for over a year before the club bought back the contract in October 2012, although they remained the club's official logistics partner. The contract for the training kit sponsorship was then sold to Aon in April 2013 for a deal worth £180 million over eight years which also included purchasing the naming rights for the Trafford Training Centre. The club's first kit manufacturer was Umbro, until a five-year deal was agreed with Admiral Sportswear in 1975. Adidas received the contract in 1980, before Umbro started a second spell in 1992. Umbro's sponsorship lasted for ten years, followed by Nike's record-breaking £302.9 million deal that lasted until 2015, 3.8 million replica shirts were sold in the first 22 months with the company. In addition to Nike and Chevrolet, the club also has several lower-level platinum sponsors, including Aon and Budweiser. On July 30, 2012, United signed a seven-year deal with American Automotive Corporation General Motors, which replaced Aon as the shirt sponsor from the 2014-15 season. The new $80 MA year shirt deal is worth $559 million over seven years and features the logo of General Motors brand Chevrolet. Nike announced that they would not renew their kit supply deal with Manchester United after the 2014-15 season, citing rising costs. Since the start of the 2015-16 season, Adidas has manufactured Manchester United's kit as part of a world record 10-year deal worth a minimum of £750 million. Originally funded by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Company, the club became a limited company in 1892 and sold shares to local supporters for £1 via an application form. In 1902, majority ownership passed to the four local businessmen who invested £500 to save the club from bankruptcy, including future club president John Henry Davies. After his death in 1927, the club faced bankruptcy yet again, but was saved in December 1931 by James W. Gibson, who assumed control of the club after an investment of £2,000. Gibson promoted his son, Alan, to the board in 1948, but died three years later. The Gibson family retained ownership of the club through James' wife. Lillian, but the position of chairman passed to former player Harold Hardman. Promoted to the board a few days after the Munich air disaster, Louis Edwards, a friend of Matt Busby, began acquiring shares in the club, for an investment of approximately £40,000, he accumulated a 54 per center shareholding and took control Indiana January 1964. When Lillian Gibson died in January 1971, her shares passed to Alan Gibson who sold a percentage of his shares to Louis Edwards' son, Martin. In 1978, Martin Edwards went on to become chairman upon his father's death in 1980. Media tycoon Robert Maxwell attempted to buy the club in 1984, but did not meet Edwards' asking price. In 1989, Chairman Martin Edwards attempted to sell the club to Michael Knighton for £20 million, but the sale fell through and Knighton joined the board of directors instead. Manchester United was floated on the stock market in June 1991, and received yet another takeover bid in 1998, 
this time from Rupert Murdoch's British Sky Broadcasting Corporation. This resulted in the formation of shareholders united against Murdoch now the Manchester United Supporters Trust who encouraged supporters to buy shares in the club in an attempt to block any hostile takeover. The Manchester United board accepted a £623 million offer, but the takeover was blocked by the Monopolies and Mergers Commission at the final hurdle in April 1999. A few years later, a power struggle emerged between the club's manager, Alex Ferguson, and his horse racing partners, John Magnier and J.P. McManus, who had gradually become the majority shareholders. In a dispute that stemmed from contested ownership of the horse rock of Gibraltar, Magnier and McManus attempted to have Ferguson removed from his position as manager and the board responded by approaching investors to attempt to reduce the Irishman's majority. In May 2005, Malcolm Glazer purchased the 28.7% stake held by McManus and Magnier, thus acquiring a controlling interest through his investment vehicle Red Football Ltd in a highly leveraged takeover valuing the club at approximately £800 million. Once the purchase was complete, the club was taken off the stock exchange. In July 2006, the club announced a £660 million debt refinancing package, resulting in a 30 per center reduction Indiana annual interest payments to £62 million a year. In January 2010, with debts of £716.5 million, Manchester United further refinanced through a bond issue worth £504 million, enabling them to pay off most of the £509 million owed to international banks. The annual interest payable on the bonds which mature on February 1, 2017 is approximately £45 million per annum. Despite restructuring, the club's debt prompted protests from fans on January 23, 2010, at Old Trafford and the club's Trafford Training Centre. Supporter groups encouraged match-going fans to wear green and gold, the colours of Newton Heath. On January 30, Reports emerged that the Manchester United Supporters Trust had held meetings with a group of wealthy fans, dubbed the Red Knights, with plans to buying out the Glazers' controlling interest. In August 2011, the Glazers were believed to have approached Credit Suisse in preparation for a $1 billion initial public offering on the Singapore Stock Exchange that would value the club at more than £2 billion. However, in July 2012, the club announced plans to list its IPO on the New York Stock Exchange instead. Shares were originally set to go on sale for between $16 and $20 each, but the price was cut to $14 by the launch of the IPO on August 10, following negative comments from Wall Street analysts and Facebook's disappointing stock market debut in May. Even after the cut, Manchester United was valued at $2.3 billion, making it the most valuable football club in the world. Note, flags indicate national team as defined under FIFA eligibility rules. Players may hold more than one non-FIFA nationality. Note, flags indicate national team as defined under FIFA eligibility rules. Players may hold more than one non-FIFA nationality. Manchester United are one of the most successful clubs in Europe. The club's first trophy was the Manchester Cup, which it won as Newton Heath LYR in 1886. In 1908, the club won its first league title, and won the FA Cup for the first time the following year. Manchester United won the most trophies in the 1990s, five league titles, four FA Cups, one League Cup, 
5 Charity Shields, 1 UEFA Champions League, 1 UEFA Cup Winners' Cup, 1 UEFA Super Cup and 1 Intercontinental Cup. The club holds the record for most top division titles including a record 13 Premier League titles and FA Community Shields. It was also the first English club to win the European Cup in 1968, and, as of 2017, is the only British club to have won the Club World Cup, in 2008. United also became the sole British club to win the Intercontinental Cup, in 1999. The club's most recent trophy came in May 2017, with the 2016-17 UEFA Europa League. In winning the 2016-17 UEFA Europa League, United became the fifth club in history to have won the European treble of European Cup slash UEFA Champions League, European Cup Winners Cup slash UEFA Cup Winners Cup, and UEFA Cup slash UEFA Europa League after Juventus, Ajax, Bayern Munich and Chelsea. Especially short competitions such as the Charity slash Community Shield, Intercontinental Cup, FIFA Club World Cup or UEFA Super Cup are not generally considered to contribute towards a double or treble.